Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome. We're going to dive in here momentarily. And um, I am going to do a live stream onto the YouTube channel. So uh, bear with us here and uh, lots of buttons and things to get going on this end. So, okay. How's everyone doing? Any questions? Kind of an, uh, kind of an ugly day here, ugly week in the markets. Okay. And if you guys are here live, welcome. Great press, start screaming. All right. So, uh, okay, we should be uh, good to go. So again, welcome everyone to this week's Crypto Mastery class. And uh, this is Brett from Moonstream, of course. And uh, this is part of our Crypto Mastery training, weekly training. We're going to cover some news. We're going to look at some charts and we're going to dive in and unpack what's been going on as well as the warning I issued last Friday. If you missed it, I did warn us on Friday that markets were heading lower. Didn't quite expect to see the alts bleed as much as they have been. And uh, Bitcoin certainly heading down. I do think the TLDR is, I think we're heading down to 62K in this buy block range and potentially down to 58K if that can't hold um, 52K is in the cards. Uh, it's not what anyone wants to hear, but uh, certainly we're seeing outflows on the IBIT, which are leading us down. So look, these things do trend, uh, tend to trade in trend channels. That's a lot of T's. And how far down we go, we don't know. But as soon as we identify that next upper trend channel, I think that's where we're going to be ready to dive back in. And I have been exer or advising, exercising sort of uh, partial stop losses and getting into some cash or stable coin to be able to buy the next bounce. But uh, if you're on short in time, uh, things do look like they will head lower. Although it's interesting, the DXY is also heading lower. So I don't know if we're starting to see a decoupling between those two yet. So let's dive over into the news and uh, if you are new here or watching the live stream or recording, uh, if you are liking the content, hit the like button and subscribe. We're going to be doing more recordings on the YouTube channel as well. And of course, some of our other services here, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But for now, let's dive in and um, cover the markets and uh, cover the news. This is a, a couple of charts here just on the short term time frame. So, um, you know, we can see on the four hour, by the way, lots of sell pressure overhead. This thing isn't going higher anytime soon. But I am going to talk about a, a bounce scenario where we might see a bit of a bounce and a relief rally here and um, before bleeding out to any further. So uh, let's see now. I don't need two of these. So let me get rid of this. Uh, and um, uh, OK, I know what that was. All right. Uh, let's see. Getting back over to the news. Which tab is that? I got too many tabs here, you guys. So basically, let's dive in. So some people I always get a kick out of this. People are saying buy the dip. Please be careful of people saying buy the dip. Um, they they the moon. Uh, you know, the perpetual moon traders are always saying buy the dip without any idea of where or why. And I just showed you the buyers are at 62K. So buying at 64K around where prices are, um, I wouldn't recommend that. So, um, you, you know, be careful always with these guys that don't really know what they're doing as far as the trading and, um, you, you know, not to discount this too far, but this is a little bit irresponsible to say buy 64K. So, um, you know, the let's see, since mid-May as Bitcoin rebound gets canceled out in hours. Um, so they're not necessarily saying buy 64K. So let's just see what they are saying. And um, but um, hopefully you guys did catch the warning on last Friday. I did send that out to our M3 Active Trader members and our Retire Rich members. So telling people to get out an urgent warning to get out of the markets as we were heading lower and more likely to head lower, which we have been. So let's see. Uh, this is basically we have our own version of this and we are going to get into and uh, covering some training. Part of this class, this weekly Tuesday class is training on the crypto mastery indicators, which does give us an edge. If you're not using these, you definitely are at a bit of a disadvantage, if not a major disadvantage for trading these markets. You can learn more about them at uh, crypto mastery dot org and um, the pro version of these uh, is at cryptomastery.org slash pro at least it was supposed to be i was trying to pull up that link myrene 
a moment ago and it was getting a uh, redirect somewhere. Okay, no, now it's working. So yeah, so our newest release on these, uh, by the way, go check these out after the class, cryptomastery.org slash pro. There's a full tour in here of, of the indicators uh, that uh, I go through on those and we're still updating that page. But these are um, definitely giving us a um, an edge in these markets. So I'll come back to this. But one of our indicators we'll talk about is our order block indicator. Um, you can go, um, there are these real-time versions of these like high block and a few others that um, really are overkill. You don't need this uh, this depth of that, but certainly knowing where the buyers and sellers are lined up is useful. And we'll be uh, adding more of that and relying on that more as we go lower and higher as well. Uh, I'm going to show some examples of where exactly it showed that um, you know the sell areas, which is where we should have been taking profits, and uh, and also the buys. I won't be looking to buy back in until we hit these buy order blocks, and then our other signals start to turn green. Uh, but again, these people always say bank buying the dip without any reason for a support level or anything like that. Uh, I don't think is a good idea. Let's see. <clears throat> I won't get into Z sync and Z tokens and all of this. This is a different story. So that's all I want to cover there. Uh, no clear catalyst. Now, this is something that is very interesting, isn't it? There wasn't a clear catalyst for this bloodbath in the altcoins, although uh, there were signals and signs on the uh, weekly, the RSI for the total tool market cap, which is essentially the total market cap, market cap minus Bitcoin or the altcoin market. And uh, that was, so when that started to breach that level, I do have a chart for that we'll look at uh, that was the first sign that this was going to head lower and uh, deepen and so a lot of things to keep in mind obviously but there wasn't a clear catalyst for the altcoins certainly the overall crypto market we've been watching the uh, bear flag or the bull flag um, play out or fail there was a bit of a fake out there where we thought we'd had a bull flag confirmation and then it dipped essentially fears and interest rates and economic wars worries and woes uh, only getting one interest rate cut this year versus the seven originally they planned so um i, I think you know look we're going to start seeing some qe and dropping of interest rates by september before the election that's uh, almost a given and it's soon they'll start pricing that in but right now uh, markets are selling off risk on assets are selling off and so um uh, that's uh, you know midsummer kind of doldrums here we'll have to see and the big traders of course are away in the hamptons and enjoying their summertime and so um you know look this morning Bitcoin is a Wall Street product now. First thing at 9.30, my alerts were going off. IBIT uh, dropping below a certain level and a sell order block. That is Wall Street. And they're selling their uh, IBITs. They're starting to sell their some of the um, uh, ETF shares. Okay. So anyway, hey, buy low, sell high. There's always an accumulation zone and a distribution zone. So we're seeing some distribution right now. Uh, if you're fully invested in writing this thing down, I feel for you. We have been uh, telling people since last week to get out, take some profits off the table, even take some minor losses off the table so that you can buy back lower and dollar cost average, which we'll show and talk about a little bit here in this class. And of course, if you'd like to go into a deeper dive in this, we do our Wednesday class in our M3 Active Trader with coin recommendations and specific ways to play these markets. And you can learn more about that over at our website, moonstream.io. Uh, right in here, it's called Moonstream Active Trader, and it includes access to those indicators that I was just mentioning. So um, go ahead and check that out. That's our Wednesday class where we'll dive a little deeper if you like what you see here today. So uh, let just, uh, you know, maybe the news will come out later. I have been searching for why did everything sell off? And again, this is a good headline. There's no clear catalyst for the bloodbath as these top altcoins fall double digits. You know, we did have some good setups last week. INJ looked good. I did buy some INJ and a handful of coins uh, last Friday. I'm going to just be upfront and honest with you. It was the worst trading uh, decision uh, probably of my crypto career. Well, I can't say worse. We make mistakes, but also a reason not to go all in. And I did buy a bunch of uh, altcoins that have been bleeding out, as I'm sure you've been seeing. Fetchcoin, Filecoin, Phantomcoin, uh, INJ looked good on the weekly time frame. But uh, a rising tide lifts all ships. A sinking tide also lowers all ships. And of course, the altcoins will see an amplified response to these things. So my strategy there is I do believe we'll have a bit of a bounce on this sort of uh, bloodbath, as they're calling it. And that will be a chance to sell into that bounce because I do feel we're going lower. 
and uh, into July, end of July, I think, uh, uh, July 28th. We're gonna we're doing some more cycle theory. We've got a great trader who'll be doing, a, hopefully I'll be able to interview him here on the YouTube channel and uh, about these cycles on Hearst, uh, who he learned from, Hearst rather, and where he can time the bottoms and tops of the the uh, time-wise, not necessarily price-wise, but that's what we can do with our indicators. So we can find the right time zones for an inflection point and time that right with our indicators. Guys, we're gonna win and win bigger than we have been. So anyway, let's unpack this a little bit more. Uh, crypto markets tumbled yesterday, see a red as some altcoins bled more than 10%, uh, some 10, 20, 30%. Uh, there was one yesterday uh, that was down 30% and um, uh, I have to pull that up, but uh, yeah, no fun, you guys. So crypto market caps fall in 2.4, uh, two, two, fall in two, 2.46 trillion. I think if we could go to 2.2 trillion, I'll show you that on the charts. And um, so I won't go into any specific coins here. I'm just looking for... Uh, yeah, so it's really been a mystery. It's just kind of a slow bleed. I think it's programmatic selling. I will show you though, by the way, just um, I'm going to show you the exact indicators that we, that our own indicators that gave me the confidence that this was a significant market top. It's also the same setup that happened and predicted the uh, major market top in 2021 where that was the market top. So I am a bit concerned here. And there's two ways to look at it. Uh, I'll come back to that. But uh, those indicators were correct. And I'll share that setup with you because uh, in the in the top of the last bull market, remember we had that peak around 70,000, 60, 70, 68,000 right in there. And that was the peak. And then we dropped and then we had that bounce. And then those same indicators fired again. They were going lower. So I do want to alert you to that. And we'll talk about that in more detail in tomorrow's M3 class. So this person saying, Chief Investment Officer of Asset Manager Apollo Crypto. They've got, a, I think that's Hey Apollo. Couldn't pinpoint the main cause of the market fall, but believes that reduced interest rates in the spot. Um, yeah, believes reduced interest rather in the spot ETFs may be a contributing factor. Now, here's some new news that just came in and... Um, let me pull that up because I do want to talk about that, you guys. And that is about potentially the ETF. The ETH ETF gets approved by uh, July 2nd. Uh, and then there's something else. Let me talk about a covered call strategy that um, that is coming out. Let me just see. This is in our M3 Active Trader chat, by the way. So you can see we're very active in here. I'm giving daily updates on that. But what I want to share with you is, let's see, where is this? Here's the article. Uh, not confirmed. It's not a major news source. We're going to have to dig around a little bit, but I want to hop over to this real quick where it's saying uh, crypto July 2nd could mark a turning point for Ethereum ETFs. It is uh, quoting a um, a very um, credible uh, crypto expert, Eric Balkunas. So in this article here, let me just skim this. I was reading it earlier. Uh, they're saying the final approval for the ETH ETF could come as soon as July 2nd. So that's next week, you guys. This news is significant, not only for crypto investors, but for the overall financial market. Balkunas says, let's see, or this is the author here, but let me just get to it. Approval of these ETFs could mark a decisive step towards legitimizing all digital assets, right? Because Bitcoin kind of, you know, they're not a security. They're, everyone expected that. But ETH, ETH is still not really clear. Since they moved from proof of um, work to proof of stake, you know, the SEC and Gary Gensler came out and said, hey, wait a minute, um, we'd have to pull back your get out of jail free card. You guys might be a security now. So while we're hypothesizing if the ETH ETF wouldn't come as soon as we thought. And so this, but they're saying now opening the door to new investment opportunities, accelerating the adoption of cryptos on an unprecedented scale. So, um, you, you know, I always take the, the news from, I won't say unknown sources, but 80% of media is placed. You know, I was starting to feel, by the way, tell me if you agree, I was starting to feel recently that we were getting into that hype cycle where people were raising their long-term estimates. You know, I remember last 2021, Kathy Wood saying million dollar Bitcoin and uh, everyone's, just, you know, coming out with lots of new news. And, and this time we just had Michael Saylor, MicroStrategy saying they're planning to buy $700 million more of Bitcoin. Um, you know, fortunately that he's a, a perma bull, but part of the issue uh, is, you know, at these hops, when people are distributing, they're also paying PR to push out a lot of very positive news to sort of create that liquidity for them. So just understand that. We talk a little more about that in M3 class and some other classes, but here down below, 
uh, again, decisive step. This could open the door for Solana ETFs and others. But where's uh, here? So Al Eric Balkunas, as I mentioned, senior ETF analyst at Bloomberg. So he's credible. I like him. Uh, is saying that the July 4th, I'll just go backtrack a bit, uh, could be July 2nd, rather, or just in time for the holiday. So that would be great. Um, now, he's pretty well, has his ear to the ground. Gary Gensler, also SEC chairman, um, I'm just going to inject. I don't think he's going to be there very long. <laughs> but uh, recently indicated the agency could approve the S1 forms for ETFs on major altcoins by the summer. Now, read that again by major altcoins, plural, highlighting significant uh, uh, improvements in the process. So basically, they're getting it through it faster now that a couple of them have have done it. Okay, so so this is why... I think it's worth it to have two narratives. So when do we think this might come and switch over? Uh, looks like my camera has stalled, you guys. What's going on with this? Uh, let me see. Are you guys seeing this? My camera stopped. Yes, it did. All right. Good thing I uh, saw that. Let me see if I can fire that up again. Where, where I improved, I increased the, uh, what do you want to call it there? The um, resolution of all this. And uh, may have burned out a memory about this. All right, you know, stand by, you guys. We're going to do this a little differently then. I, I'm not sure why that happened, but uh, okay. Well, uh, hold on a second. Uh, we are live, so what I'm going to do here uh, is um, jump over to do something else here. Bear with me, guys. Just take a second. I'm going to kill. Uh, if you're watching the uh, live stream, I think that... Um, uh, this, um, may change here actually. Cause I, uh, if I, if I, okay, I just stopped the stream. Well, that's too bad. You guys, the stream just died. So anyway, all this technology, what I'm going to do then is I'll start the video, uh, again, and I'll share my screen again, but it may be just too much bandwidth here pushing through with all of these charts and videos. So now you should be able to see my chart. All right, so we're going to come back and kind of do it how we have been doing it, but there's a lot of buttons on my end. I got to flip around here. So anyway, uh, it would be great if this thing would stay on here. So basically, choose virtual background. I need to do two quick things, you guys. So I'm going to hop over to this, and uh, then I'm going to close that and then turn on the camera here. All right, it likes to hide itself, apparently. Uh, all this technology, major pain, and you know what? Okay, you guys, so now I should be back. Are we back? We're back. All right, let me do one quick thing, too. Uh, any questions on what I'm going over, you guys? All right. So, apologies, you guys. We're trying to give you the best experience possible. And we conked out. We ran out of memory. Something happened. It was glitch. We'll keep going. How about that? All right. So with that in mind, uh, you guys can see this. You can see the screen share. Very good. Uh, all right. So basically, let's keep moving on this. So steps to allow the listing and trading of eight Ethereum ETFs. Now, eight. Now, that would be obviously Solana and some of the bigger ones have already been initiated by the SEC. No, I'm, I don't know why no one's talking about this. Uh, this company, Coin Tribune, barely. I've never heard of them before. So, um, you know, we want to wait for some confirmation, but certainly interesting, notably through the approval of necessary rule changes. So let's read that again. Notably through the approval of necessary rule changes is allowing the listing and trading potentially of eight ETH ETFs. So uh, that's good. That's good news. The S-1 registration forms, which contain detailed information about the financial products, still need to be finalized before the official launch. All right, so that's uh, that's what hopefully they're improving. Last May, the SEC requested issuers to update these forms, right, and uh, sign that the process is progressing rapidly. Okay, so um, turning point potentially for crypto investments. So look, what are we doing here? We are bleeding out. Um, you know, where is this going? We want to look for opportune buy-in points if this happens we will get a bit of a bounce and maybe that is the catalyst for the bounce that we are, are expecting like i said back in 2021 market peak 
drop and then we bounced and that was like, that was kind of a fake out bounce because everyone was like um oh maybe everything's okay the bull run's still here now uh, i will dissect that a little deeper here but um just for now i do expect we'll have a bounce and and it would be catalyst driven so that would make sense we sort of bleed down till next tuesday get that announcement and then markets rally for a period of time but i think it's probably going to be later in the month even maybe even august september but july 28th is around when that cycle uh, the 80 day cycle should be bottoming out. Uh, I know it's not, not as easy as everyone thinks you guys. So this person, another ETF analyst shares the optimism. The final steps before approval are often the most critical, but everything indicates that the SEC is ready to move forward. So, uh, that is good news. And, uh, let me just come over here and move this. I'm going to move. I want to make sure I can see the chat. Uh, all these things are covering each other. Um, so we should be back. Okay. According to him, a few minor adjustments remain before the final approval is granted. So a few is the key words, encouraging sign for the cryptocurrency markets. Um, by the way, you guys, if you want this article, uh, I will drop it in the chat for you because you may want to check that out. The approval of the ETH ETF could have major repercussions for institutional and individual investors by facilitating access to ETH through regulated financial products, Okay, so regulated financial products, read it between the lines. That means big money, uh, family offices, institutional traders, hedge funds can pretty much do that already. But facilitating access to Ethereum through regulated financial products. Now, uh, before I read any further, that takes time. And, and, and just to come back on the uh, Bitcoin ETFs, uh, a lot of these financial advisors started doing their due diligence back in January, and it says sometimes it takes six to 12 months. So the money hasn't really been freed up. The floodgates haven't opened yet on the Bitcoin ETF because they're still doing their due diligence, whatever that is. And similarly, uh, ETH will go through a similar process. So I think we see a bit of a um, you know bounce and sell the news kind of event, but the ETH ETFs are going to be much smaller than the Bitcoin ETF. So just keep that in mind. We're not going to necessarily see a huge boon right out of the gate. So what does this mean, you guys? What does it really mean? It means we're setting up for that Bitcoin four-year cycle really playing out into 2025, which is what we want. This pullback isn't fun, and um, you know, but it will if history repeats itself, we can never be sure, but it, this is looking like it's going to oh, bleed out some of the, um, you know, the leverage in the system kind of lets people take some profits, let the big players have a lower entry, which they want. And then we really blast off in 2025. So in many ways, this is good news. I was of the opinion we'd have a left translated cycle and we'd be hitting 100,000 by now. Uh, clearly that wasn't the case uh, and that was dampened by comments from the Fed and interest rate fears and economic uncertainty. So look, guys, all we can do is sort of lay out the uh, possibilities. And I do have a chart for that. But uh, other than that, we really have no control. So it's always good to have a plan, work your plan or plan your day, then work your plan, you know, plan your trading, then work your plan. So at this point, uh, we're kind of waiting for this catalyst to sort of come true or not, and then be ready for uh, buying in and banking back some. If you know, if you have some losses over the last few weeks, uh, it, um, it it's which is likely, then this would be the way to play it, in my opinion. This decision could not only bolster the credibility of cryptos, it also attract significant influx of capital. Right, so this is good news. And for the long term, mass adoption, you want to hear these things and uh, the mass adoption, you know, it's there's several sources of that. There's the retail public that's watching news online and YouTube and articles and, you know, there's certainly that. But the much bigger bags, as it were, haven't come into this market yet. Institutional investors, sovereign wealth funds. And so the credibility has been an issue. I know. Um, several people, aside from Michael Saylor, who's very smart and brilliant and, and his ability to see through the noise, but somebody else uh, in my extended circle who knows him uh, and has, um, I don't know if he's a billionaire or not, he's done some satellite work, but essentially he thinks everything, he thinks this, this whole thing is going to blow up and go to zero. He doesn't believe in it. The credibility isn't there for people that have a lot to lose and don't have the conviction of Michael sailor and micro strategy so this new liquidity however could increase market stability reduce volatility i think that's a big part of the problem with this market 
um, a problem meaning credibility at the higher level where the bigger money is. I know, I'm sure you guys are following this. The new liquidity could increase stability and reduce volatility, making cryptocurrencies more attractive to a broader audience. Now, um, you know, it also means less volatile is going to make it maybe harder for the day traders. And um, I think still that's going to be a good thing for most of us. As swing traders, that's what we want to see. Because the, this since last week, this bleed out has just happened so fast, hasn't it? And we really didn't have time to catch our breath. We saw, you know, I did our alert the warning bells actually Wednesday when the uh, we had a bit of a, a scare with the CPI numbers. And then Thursday, uh, it looked a little bit better. So we rallied up. And I'm like, maybe we're okay, because these signals I'm going to share or show you, stick around, because these four signals are the ones that called every major, major market top, and especially the 2021. And uh, they fired last Wednesday, and then they went away because it went back up. And then Friday, they were back. And I'm like, this is bad, you guys. So hopefully some of you got that and listened. Um, if you didn't and you're watching the replay, uh, definitely check out our M3 active trader class. Again, I was warning everybody, I'll just show you. I don't mean to pat my own back here, but I want you guys to see this. Uh, let me just go. This is our chat that we were talking about. And um, this is a revised setup here, but my warnings, let me just see if I can skim through this. Lots of chatter every day. And uh, so we're in there every day giving picks and recommendations, but I'm um, talking about the petrodollar losing that here. Major warning sign. Um, so basically, this is the setup, that red arrow there. This is one of our indicators, as many of you know, and this big bearish engulfing candle. So all through here, let's see, where are we time-wise? Uh, only sharing this with you so you, you can be clear that so we actually we did this on the right timing. So basically, where is that market? Uh, Sunday, June 16th. Um, yeah, no, this is way earlier. So it was up in here, warning signs. So we were telling people early that this is likely going to come down. Do not like this big red weekly candle right here, Friday, June 14th. So we've been talking about this since last Friday, actually last Wednesday. And uh, so just so you guys can see that, you, if you were in this M3 Active Trader class, you would have been alerted early and had time to get partially in the cash. Anyway, I, I won't go too far back, you guys, but... Um, uh, so this was Thursday. It looks like we can breathe a sigh of relief. We got that green candle, but, uh, it did come back. And of course, Wednesday, last Wednesday was when I was really sounding the uh, alert here back in this. But anyway, I I'm not going to scroll too much farther back through this. We have been watching the I bet. Here it is. I don't like this weekly chart. This is Tuesday. Even I don't like this weekly chart until it's confirmed. We won't make any rash decisions. So we confirmed it Friday, but uh, I was telling people to get out back here. Bitcoin was still at some um, 66 and all coins hadn't really, uh, hadn't really dropped yet so anyway um there you go moonstream.io slash m3 you can join monthly you can join quarterly but we're giving a lot of alpha there and uh coin picks so basically let's talk about the news here again the long term the approval could serve as a catalyst for other regulatory in initiatives favorable to crypto so that's interesting i mean all of this does fit the longer term mass adoption narrative because as credibility improves and so one regulatory body says, okay, it's good, then others are going to be more likely and it's just a process. Regulators, and I was just going to say this, other countries, right? So regulators in other countries are closely monitoring the SEC's actions and approval could encourage other jurisdictions. So, so guys, I'm going to go out on a limb and just say this will likely be the catalyst for the next phase of the bull run because and this might happen s slowly but uh this will this will get it to turn around and then i think we do see qe coming in we're going to see the interest rates drop in september we've unpacked that uh, last week in our m3 class it's like uh it's, it's like 60 70 percent priced in um, if not higher. Um, but uh, before then, probably not. So basically, QE uh, are probably going to come in before the election. So these are the two factors we want to watch for as a catalyst. And but just finishing this thought, this could accelerate the global adoption of digital assets. Hey, you know, I like this, this author's writing style. It's it's a lot of these articles are very wordy and AI written. This is this is a very good point. It's point after point. It makes sense. I'm highlighting all of it. This could accelerate the global adoption of digital assets. 
Um, guys, that is really where we are. We're in the wild, wild west here, uh, you know, where there's lots of uh, shootouts and outlaws shooting guns at everybody. But uh, eventually the sheriff's going to come in and clean up the town. <laughs> OK, driven by increased investor confidence and continued innovation in the sector. So a great article, you guys. I, I, check out that link. And uh, so, right, cool. Uh, I, you know, I don't often give kudos. Uh, it looks like a French gentleman, Luke, Jose. Nicely done. Well done. All right. Somebody posted a link here. In spite of the market wide crop, I mean, I imagine you mean drop. It's interesting that the fear and greed indicator uh, is up a little bit to 74. Um, yeah, isn't that's interesting. The fear and greed indicator, I think it's kind of losing its, it's, it's definitely, it's not really real time. It's delayed. Um, I, there's no reason for the greed indicator to have gone up uh, in the last few days. No reason at all. So I don't really, I don't know. I don't really follow it. It, it does, it seems to be a lagging indicator. Um, let's see. Let's get back to the news here. I do want to get over to some charts. How are we doing on time? Doing okay. Bitcoin analysts, uh, optimistic. Who is a Bitcoin analyst? No idea. Who's the author? Never heard of him. Uh, optimistic of buying Bitcoin lower as three trend lines fail. Well, I believe, I agree with that, but not quite yet. So let's see. Um, uh, we're going to talk about this, do our own TA on this. Uh, they're talking about current levels. And let's see, Will Clemente, he's good. Let's see. Typically serves as a good line. What is he saying? Uh, Bitcoin approaching short-term hodler's cost basis around 63.8. Yeah, I mean, these things are... Uh, the MRV score is interesting. I like that one. But a lot of this on-chain metrics and Glassnode, uh, it's just, it's not there. We, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Uh, you can catch micro swings, but I like to see it more real time. So, but Will Clemente is good. He said, I uh, don't want to see consecutive days close below. Um, let's not, I don't need to unpack that any further. According to Ordinalizing Order Book, activity spoofing was rife okay large blocks of liquidity being posted and removed in possible attempt to drive bitcoin in a certain direction yeah that's really sure to show like big order blocks to kind of uh trick everybody into thinking they're going higher and it's an old trick back in the day trading days and back in the day trading days you'd have a big investment house you know like knight or um you know goldman go heavy on the bid everyone watching level two would say goldman's buying but but you know but they weren't they were selling heavy through one of these other brokers uh like knight or one of the other ones and so uh that's similar um you, you gotta be careful in this so a good bunch of those orders got filled he said all right altcoins lose as lose big as all coins as bitcoin sneezes yeah uh, it's um uh, Bitcoin sneezed and all coins uh, have COVID here, it looks like. So um, what else related? Why is crypto down today? We'll look at that a bit. I'm going to pick up the pace so we can get to the charts. We attribute the weakness in majors to lack of news flow. Uh, what? A lack of news flow? Well, there has been, but I wouldn't attribute weakness to that. It's just selling. I mean, um, outflows on the ETFs and... Uh, Profit taking, preservation, like we say, uh, Bitcoin takes the stairs up and the elevator down. And uh, so basically, what do we have here? All right, that's it there. Let's move on. So these articles, so I see these Cointelegraph articles aren't nearly as uh, well written. Uh, nothing against Cointelegraph, but that guy did a good job on that article, I have to say. Uh, all right, so the previous one we were on. Why is crypto market down today? As I said, the hawkish Fed basically pouring cold water on the markets and outflows. Yeah, so outflows from the US-based spot ETFs have helped drive the crypto market sell-off. You know, I mean, I guess it's fair to say the ETFs will be trading these markets. They won't, but just be buying. They also have to show returns at the end of the day to their investors. And so, you know, they can't let all of their profits bleed out from when they first uh, started buying. So crypto markets took a hit today, a total market cap. We already covered that. Let's skim over this. Fed's official rate cut project projection hurt crypto market. And that's really what it was. So uh, started over the weekend. Um, let's see, uh, the Minneapolis Fed chief, Fed Reserve chief made a reasonable prediction about only one, re well, okay, there's nothing there. Guys, you can find all this information, let's see, under trading news and events, go to the FOMC Fed Watch tool. Uh, you don't need these guys to give us a reasonable projection, you just go to the Fed Watch tool, here it is. So, uh, in the 
Uh, let's see, we're in July. We already said uh, July, 91% chance they leave rates where they are at 525 to 550. And then September, it leaps up to 61% that they drop. Uh, and uh, and then 50% um, uh, in uh, into November. So basically, but it's interesting, they're still allowing a 20%, they'd stay where they are. But what happens, the reason this went down from September, September, they're saying 60% chance they drop a quarter basis point. Into November, they're saying 50% that it happens then, but 27, because 27% of a another rate cut, right? So that's how to read that. Um, but anyway, so so that's the deal there. And uh, we talked about that last week. So um, Ethereum price, let's see, clear catalyst we talked about. Uh, Ethereum price to 10K is the most asymmetric bet in a crypto. Um, you know, by Zoltan, of course. Uh, those, Zoltan reminds me of that old thing. You go to the amusement park and it's called, is it Zoltan or Zoltar? You, know, you drop a dollar in, I was about to say the quarter, it used to be a quarter, drop a dollar into this thing and it tells you your future. Uh, so uh, Zoltan here, is predicting the future for us, uh, ETH at 10K. Um, I, I would almost bet that he has lots of ETH <laughs> that he's holding on to. But anyway, let's let's not discount it. I mean, ETH, what is it, around um, in the 3,500s or so? I'm just guessing. I haven't looked at it here in a couple of days uh, in detail. Actually, it's not true. I looked at it yesterday. But yeah, 3,415. Um, so, so let's see. Let's go back to what Zoltan predicts. So, you know, to double to 10K, certainly possible. Uh, and, um, but it doesn't give a timeline, does it? I think ETH goes to 15K and the next, this bull run potentially, but, uh, but I like Solana from a, an ROI standpoint, just to be clear, um, ETH to 10K could be the best bet in crypto. Let's see what he says. Asymmetric bets where there's a much higher risk reward than on the downside, if it goes up or one directional actually. So, uh, on current cryptocurrency market conditions, I don't know. This just kind of screams toward trying to prop up the price uh, by creating a narrative that fits what you want to happen. The most asymmetric back, ETH to 10,000, but why? Let's just say, uh, does he give a reason why or is he just saying that? Okay, Bitcoin price clusters hint at more downside. I've already covered that. We'll look at that in our own charts. Can ETH boost ETH? Uh, ETFs. All right, well, the ETFs would. That's what he's getting to. Despite the bullish prediction... Projection, what is it? Prediction ETH still struggling. Uh, let's say, yeah, but if ETH loses 3,500, I mean, where would I be buying? I'd be buying around 2,880. Why? There's a big block, buy block down there. Uh, we might get a, a one sooner. We'd want to see a higher low. We don't want to revisit this, but a double bottom is strong, positive um, indication. So if we look at a weekly here, no real indication of other buy pressure. So basically, uh, ether supply on an exchanges hits an eight-year low. Um, well, that means people are taken into cold storage to not sell. Um, that's what it would normally lead to. We never really know what, what what's happening at these things. ETH supply, eight-year low, doesn't really tell us that much, but institutional demand will be unlocked through an ETF in July. So so this is the reason why. He's just not being very clear about, like, here's why this will happen. But they're planning on ETH ETF opening up in July on exchange supply is at an all uh, eight-year low. So that should drive the prices higher. Fair enough. Uh, let's see, Bitcoin white cuff pattern. All right, I do want to see that. Let's see, uh, white cuff patterns typically not predictive in terms of where price will go. So, you know, I was, I have a bull flag scenario that takes us to 100K, but let's see. Uh, Zoltan, there's our friend Zoltan again. He uh, He's getting lots of dollars here. Let's put a dollar in and see what he has to say. <laughs> All right, Bitcoin, white cuff pattern, uh, 85K. I want to find out why he says that. First, Bitcoin needs a weekly close above 71.3. I think it's more like 72.5, but really I want to see Bitcoin close above 74K to get that bull flag and uh, all new uh, all time high um, to be safe. To be safe. I like to buy into strength, even if I'm a little late. Key technical pattern suggests Bitcoin is headed to 85. All right, what is it? Wyckoff pattern. Um, I, I don't know. So uh, this, the spring... Okay, so he's maybe saying, what is this? This is a daily chart in Bitcoin, but this doesn't seem right. We've been heading lower. So when was this? This is June 6th. This was last week. This is an old article. Uh, always check the date on your articles. I got fooled there. June 6th. I see. 
I got excited because our boy Zoltan had uh, had another bit of wisdom for us. So um, we're we're not going to unpack this. This is um, was wrong. <laughs> so, but but anyway, let's look at the Wyckoff pattern just while we're here. So so basically, um, this may still be the case. We're in distribution. So the buying climax that was the new all time high. We pull back. We're in a sideways pattern. Uh, we had the failed rally. We had a few of them and a test. So we had a failed rally and a test. So we're starting to see the break of the ice to coming down. And so my my hope and fear is that that we're not seeing this major sell off going into phase E of the Wyckoff patterns because it would it would be meaningful for a couple of reasons and not none of them good. Um, I guess let's jump over here because the that would mean a triple top on Bitcoin. If we jump over to a weekly here, we can see this a little bit better. And, uh, you know, so here we typically breakouts happen on the third or fifth attempt. That's my own experience and empirical knowledge. No one else really talks about that. But third or fifth attempt has been my experience. So we had uh, here break a new tall all time high. What does that look like? It looks like the buying climax. Then we came down, we pushed back up for the second attempt. And what uh, what does that look like? Why is this not letting me move my things around? So that looks like this, uh, this sort of um, uh, retest here, lower retest. And we came down a little bit into this range. And then we had number three was the failed rally. Okay. And then number four is the test, which didn't, it also didn't break out uh, of this level. So that means that we're looking at a pullback and so there's two two scenarios here. We have either a deeper pullback and then we push up to new highs. And I do think that's more likely because we haven't yet broken sizably to a new all-time high. And I'll talk about that pattern a little bit. Whereas over here at the market cycle top, we had we had we had entered the last phase of the bull market and had the parabolic rise. That's the difference. Um, and, and just a sidebar, so I don't lose everybody. But typically, when we um, come into a zone of sort of the old highs, you know, we sort of saw it here. Then we could see and remember, guys. You know, with front, even in a bull market, we can see these sixty percent pullbacks in Bitcoin. Um, hopefully we don't come back that low. That was the COVID crash. So let's just say that's not likely. But if we come around here, 50% pullback on Bitcoin, certainly possible and alts could bleed lower. But the point of this is, um, you know, these retests of the the prior block here and here and here, you know, it takes a few times to really get at it to get to this phase. And we haven't seen this phase yet. So that's the difference. That's why I think we are leaning more toward this kind of uh, retesting, you know, of the old prior all time high, even though we didn't quite get to it versus say, uh, you know, hitting a new high. So that, that's kind of the difference. I believe we're seeing that kind of same type of retesting of this old also all time high. However, um, is this a triple top? Was that the cycle high? I have left the possibility open and I talked about this in M3 trader of, a double top. Remember back and when in doubt, zoom out. It's still possible. You know, let's say we we just hit a top and we're going to pull back down. And I need to get to a longer chart of Bitcoin just for that to show you the 2013 where we had that double top. Okay, so do I think that's the case? I don't, but anything can happen, you guys. Uh, so what did we have back in 2013? Let me zoom out a bit so you guys can see it. We saw we saw this happen. We saw a market cycle peak, rampant run up, and then we had essentially a crash, and then we had another peak the same year. So my job is to put everything on the radar for you guys. But um, the difference is this was a 64%. I mean, technically, if it came down here, that was a 68%. That qualifies as a bear market, you guys, before it rallied again. Now the thing is, though, we didn't do, we didn't see this kind of parabolic run yet. That's the thing, and, and so you know, let let's leave it on the radar. Let me come back to that. And these tools in trading view are completely buggered lately. Okay, so let's get back to the example, and then a little bit more news. But I want to just cover this so you guys understand what we're, we're looking at. So basically, this. Uh, the Bitcoin breakout attempts, we're on a third, we're on a fifth uh, thesis of fifth breakout. Question is, do we come back down here to 62K at the 21 week EMA and then go higher, right? 
or do we deep dip down lower and come down to like this 50 week EMA around 52 K uh, and then go higher. So or, or there's another scenario where we come back down to 44 K. I don't think so. You know, could we come back down to this trend line though? That's what worries me. That's what worries me, you guys, because this has been a very important trend line and here and here. So, but because bull markets typically have three slopes of a bull run and we we need really the problem is we've lost this secondary slope here do you see this right here that should have been hate to say it that way should have been our secondary slope so that the parabolic slope could go from there now um we could redraw this a little bit i guess technically we could do that because this wick came down to here, but I don't know. That's awfully flimsy. I usually do it on a real body. All right, let's come back to that. Uh, let's see. Question, can the ETF sell on their own if their clients are telling them to buy? Yeah, the Perry, the ETFs, you know, that's a misnomer that basically money in buy out right away. I, I you know, I don't have, we don't know actually, but I, that's worth looking into because, you would think so, but I have a hard time believing that. Well, here's what I think is the answer, and and I don't know the answer, so I'll tell you that. But probably these ETFs have institutional um, investors, and I believe they're the ones that are selling there to to preserve profit. It's probably not so much the retail buyers who are more long term mindset. And some of it, some of it is programmatic buying and selling. So at the institutional level, hedge fund level, if X and B, then Y, right? So, um, or whatever those are, and that will initiate sales. So they're just, they ha they take all the emotion out of it. A lot of it's AI driven. And uh, so if they believe further downside is coming, these programmatic sales will happen in the real markets, but also I believe we'll be selling automatically, sending sell orders to the uh, IBITs and fidelities of the world. And again, more of the institutional side than the the retail side. Okay, so that's my thoughts. Um, but we we don't know. We may not know uh, offhand really who because they don't say. We just see inflows, outflows. We don't know who they are. That would be useful information. Um, so, but so what I do want to stay with me here because do you see this rate? That's not going to let me highlight it. Um, where if we drop down here and we see a low volume rally to kind of come retest this, you know, that would be down lower, but we're seeing, we don't see in a rally. Now we are seeing dropping in volume, but specifically we're looking for a low volume. Um, Sorry, I'm looking at some news here. Yeah, look at all these news. The news just gets it wrong so often. Uh, you know, crypto Twitter's $1 million prediction posts, spot ETF approval. Uh, this is that hype cycle. Be very wary of this because you see these kinds of raised price predictions at the peaks. Didn't we see the most of this? We were hitting all-time highs and they were selling us on $100,000 Bitcoin. And to be fair, we were also doing our own math and saying 100,000 Bitcoin likely. And we just all, you know, consensus is dangerous. So this is kind of my theory is that um, the media is, you know, the crypto globe, who's putting this article out and why? Paid media placement, PR reps, uh, you know, if you want, this is kind of my new working theory. If you're a big player, billionaire, will, et cetera, and you want to start offloading your bags and, and you and there's not enough buyers, this is how they create buyers. Uh, PR rep. Yeah, give me a bunch of articles uh, on these other uh, sites, you know, about higher prices. Let's get Kathy Wood quoted on a million dollar Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. So Crypto Globe, never heard of them. Uh, PR placement, most likely, uh, and and often paid. All right, I'll get off. I'll take my tin hat off here for a minute, but um, a little bit of paranoia, a little bit. It's always served me well. So basically, you're saying um, in the face of the cryptocurrency downturn, uh, it contradicts bull predictions from crypto Twitter had anticipated Bitcoin reaching a million dollars following US SEC's approval of the spot Bitcoin ETF. Well, you know, that was certainly uh, dead wrong. And um, so, and so, yeah, and it's a blog post that they put on a blog somewhere and then it got picked up on the wires. 
uh, significant milestone. I don't think we need to unpack this, you guys. I want to get make good use of your time and our time, but um, market conditions, Federal Reserve, market sentiment, we already covered that. Uh, okay, so I won't get into this at all. So what did, what did I do there? Uh, another news. So basically, coming back to this uh, and this, I'm going to copy this picture, by the way. That's a good one of the Wyckoff patterns. And sure enough, I'm going to share that with our M3 Active Traders because that's a good one. Okay, what else is in this article, you guys? Uh, Wyckoff, Bitcoin, uh, Wyckoff is uh, good stuff. Bitcoin needs a weekly close over 71.3. I think it's a little higher, 72.5, I said. But um, and Rex Capital saying we're still in an accelerated cycle, aka left translated. Instead of 260 days ahead of schedule, we're 170 days. Uh, but this could rapidly change if we get a weekly candle close uh, above there. So, I mean, look, there could be an unknown catalyst that comes and, and just rallies this market. But uh, the Bitcoin RSI, let's see. Uh, yeah, so that hit a key level, came back down. We'll look at these as well. Really, we look at those more, more in tomorrow's class. Um, yeah, so here, ETFs, collective inflows of 500 million, give or take, on uh, June 5th. Um, but they recorded their second best inflow day on June 4th, 886 million but by feb 15 bitcoin etfs so okay so the problem is it's unsustainable to keep these levels right and keep that in mind as we go higher it requires more and more money to prop it up and maintain certain levels so we we need another on-ramp you guys and uh so kind of getting ahead of ourselves which we should uh in this game of musical chairs when the music stops, and we're going to have to watch really carefully this rest of this year and next year to be out and to not question the signals. Because I, you know, I know that a lot of people, have, you guys didn't sell when I told you and take some off the table. Cause, and it's hard because you're busy. It's like, well, maybe it'll be fine. And I keep seeing these news articles that were going higher. Uh, and now look what happened. I put this warning out last week, you guys. So no excuses. Um, Solano slumps 45-day low. Will Solana bounce at 130? We'll certainly take a look at that. I like Solana. Let's see what it's looking like. Um, but is it a buy right now? It is not, in my opinion. It's losing the 21-week EMA. And, uh, you know, if we let's just see what this kind of potential bull flag scenario looks like. But, um, you know, it's got a little ways to go down. I think Solana is a buy down here at 108. And uh, let's look at a daily, see if there's any buy blocks. I mean, here, well, okay, so there's some buy blocks here at 130. All right. Um, I would say, you know, here's here's how I'd read that. Wait for it to come back down into this range. Hit the buy block, but then wait for like our ERI TSI to go red. Then I would say get in. So we had, uh, if we get the double ERIs are usually good, but this is that key driver. TSI going red, green over 20. And then I'd like to see also our RSI on the weekly, which it's heading down. It was green last week. We had a bit of a pop with this. So so bottom line, not, nothing to buy here right now. And and be very careful. I, the mistake that I made, you know, we're always learning. The mistake that I made last week on that bounce day was to Friday, I believe, was to start buying when I still believed that the Bitcoin would come down. And the charts on some of these altcoins looked good and they were fake, they were fake outs, injective, phantom coin, fetch coin, file coin. Uh, and um, yeah, they're bleeding. I'm getting my ass kicked on these. Um, but again, I didn't go all in. I made reasonable investments at each level for, for me. And uh, I'll be adding to that, doubling it when I get back down lower and, and then adding some on the way up into strength. So... Uh, Perry, as long as you sell your positions, the market will go back up. Yeah, go ahead and sell now, Perry. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I just guys, um, there is certainly mass psychology, uh, and and it's when it's it's when you're most panicked. Those that's why those capitulations are great for buying. I I would like to see a capitulation here where it's just like panic drop down to a key level. 
And then I'm going to be sending some buy limit orders, by the way. We'll talk about that tomorrow in M3, what I'm watching, where to get in, where I will be buying. Because there's because these buy blocks are great. We'll just and sometimes on those capitulations, I'll go boom, they go boom, and then they'll bounce 20, 30 percent same day. Uh, back in the day trading days, there was a guy in our office. He was a wizard. Uh, read about him in the Washington Post, had a full color thing about this guy. Lawrence Black, and I was why I opened an account there. And uh, he saw things nobody else would see. And he'd hit a few buttons. He'd massively short the entire market. Tech stock overnight, it'd be, he'd be up a quarter million dollars. It was insane. Um, but um, what did I, what was I going with that? Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about, you guys? Basically, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the capitulations. So he would be in there and he would just, people like, uh, you know, sh sh what should we do here? And he said, wait for the capitulation. And because he knew when this thing started just coming, he would, he, he was definitely on the spectrum and he was part matrix, part computer. I don't know. He walked with 10 million or so and it was all said and done. Uh, and I kept in touch with him for a while, but uh, he would always say, wait for the capitulation and then he'd be buying it. So let's see, David said, I sold all my alts between Sunday and this this morning, if for no other reason than to lock in some with profit. Yeah, that's good. Um, although, um, yeah, did you sell all of it? Because generally I'll recommend sell 20%, 30% and or 50%. You know, um, it sort of eases the pain if you're looking at this big loss. You know, that's dangerous because then you sort of like head in deer, deer in headlights. And uh, okay, yeah. So David, you've been selling in chunks, like we we've taught we've talked about. So a good good job there, because for for what reason to buy back lower. And the hardest thing for a new trader is to to do that when the markets turn and they do and, they, and when they go down they go down fast, you know. And our hopium kicks in, and uh, we start saying, "Well, I I, God, I don't know what to do. I got to go pick up the kids. I got to go do this." And they're just like, I, "I can't handle this." I, I'll you know. And then it bleeds lower and lower. And then you have that guilt, like, "I sh why why didn't I sell? I should have sold." So by doing it in small pieces, you sort of minimize that pain, and the the upside that you want to keep in mind is because then you can buy back lower preservation of capital, you guys. And, uh, you, you know, sometimes I get so busy teaching you guys, I don't get a chance to do that. And I, and so I do as I say, not as I do, but, um, but anyway, let's keep going. Uh, Solana price at one thirty. that's a possible bounce I would say, but I would want to wait for the indicators to turn higher. We're running a bit long on the news. You guys let's go over. Cause I know everyone's busy. I want to get, uh, over to the actual charts. Let's see. BitMEX founder Arthur Hayes, uh, former CEO, predicts Solana will not be a top base layer chain application within one to three years. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder why. Well, well, because it's all about transaction speed. Um, now, I think he's missing the fact that Solana has FireDancer coming out. FireDancer, uh, well, that's a layer two, I believe, but that's boasting 500,000 to a million transactions per second on Solana. Huge. But all right, he's all right. So he's saying Aptos. Uh, interesting. We should put that on the radar. Um, you know, but look, Arthur Hayes, um, lovely guy, but um, he will do everything to make a buck. And if he, he I'm going to say he probably owns a bunch of Aptos uh, is why he's promoting it. Um, kind of like Pendle and some of the other ones. So anyway, uh, Aptos uses a modular approach to transactions processing where the transactions are grouped into batches and executed during. Well, that's that's what MasterCard and Visa does. They batch transactions. So I guess the only benefit is it's still uh, decentralized. But let's look at that. Uh, Aptos will pull up a chart. Um, okay, derivatives metrics worry investors why we've got, yeah, the derivatives do kind of throw a turd in the punch bowl when, you know, we get all of this incentive to move prices in the opposite direction. This is showing here, it uh, looks like $588 million and DAPS volume, but I don't know. Let's see, the, but the, that's a bullish thing. The significant volume, 500 million, 89 million weekly volume, and um, 
it's saying significantly smaller than BNB. But what I wanted to point out is Solana is now driving more money over the Ethereum bridge than the Ethereum. So, uh, but let's see. This is interesting. The blockchains, including Arbitrum, Base, and Optimism, I mean, Base is brand new, but I, they're huge, already surpassed the Solana network in terms of DApps activity. So that's also true. Uh, okay, so, you know, I mean, we want to keep an eye on these. Base is for sure going to be a big player. Optimism, uh, loved that coin, owned a bunch in the toilet. So Arbitrum, let's watch those for the rest of the bull run. And uh, let's see, tell for shutdowns. So better say it. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, that's it for the news, you guys. How about that? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, ETH Sol. Let's take a look at that. A good segue. Uh, have been looking at Sol ETH rather. Do you want, um, well, Sol ETH, ETH Sol, uh, potato, potato, but these, this is looking into a buy zone here. And what I would do in this type of chart pattern is do Fibonacci and just see. You know, that thing came right down or it's coming down to its 618 retracement. But um, who knows? And yeah, that's the stuff. They don't have ETH Sol. It's it's um, Sol ETH. Uh, now we can look at Sol dominance. I look, I've been watching Sol Bitcoin. You know, but typically on all these, the returns are greater with Sol USD. Uh, and uh, let's see, unless I'm missing something. ETH, is there an ETH Sol? I don't think there is. There's Well, there's a Perpetual Futures. Maybe there is. Um, I didn't know I, that they were doing things in relation to Solana. If I'm wrong, let me know. But um, I don't know. This is, this is new. There's a Perpetual on it. ETH versus Sol looking good on a weekly. Actually, that's interesting. I'm going to put it on the radar. Okay. Well, because, I mean, I don't know. It's total two just lost. All right, let's do, take a look at that. Yes, it did. Yep. This is the altcoins, you guys. All right, since we're here. Uh, what I want to show you is, hang on a second, there's my iBit, total market cap, I need, there's, I have a specific chart that, that, uh, is kind of falling off the radar. Um, hang on a second, let me load that layout. My, uh, trading monthly, all studies, I believe it's this one. I was updating this the other day. Yeah, this is it. Okay, watch this, you guys. So the total two, this is the altcoin market. One of the reasons that things are dumping, we did get a big red RSI on this, by the way. And this is a monthly chart. I'll go to a weekly. Gosh, you guys, monthly chart. We don't want to be seeing that. Um, And we have a TSI rolling over. Last time we saw these two, was January 2022. That's when I was telling people, get out of these markets. Guys, we'll talk more about this in M3 tomorrow, but I am getting a little bit anxious on uh, on all of this. Uh, so let's go here. What I want to show you is on the weekly, the RSI and the Stochastics RSI. So uh, this, this um, you know, I'm not the only trader that talks about this, but this, these are the key levels on the uh, total market cap Two, which is everything minus Bitcoin, right? So basically these levels, we lost this 50, this call it 60 level, which has been fairly significant in, in the past, right? This range here, huh, I'm holding down my uh, shift key that usually makes it just go parallel, but you guys can see. So we just lost the key level on the weekly. And um, when when this happened here, this was December of 2021, right before the market crash. And so I do want to just remind you guys, if we start seeing a bounce on this, it's likely not going to be the bottom. This would be a place to get out of some coins. 
So, <clears throat> you know, um, we'll, we'll just have to unpack this as we go, but are we seeing, this is the big question. Did we, was that the market top? That's what, you know, come on, this thing, sorry, you guys, this trading views changed something where it went, it, you know, you used to be able to click on something you just created and it would highlight it. Now it likes to create a different one. And I'm just trying to delete this thing. All right. I'm going to leave it there. No, I want to just make this bigger. Okay, is that so hard? Cool. Um, all right, you guys. Uh, a couple other things we could do there. Sometimes I do like draw trend lines on the RSI, and you know, so we'll keep an eye on this. Let's come back out of this. How low will it go though? We don't know this. TS Stochastics RSI um, also heading back down. The MACD. You know, we did have an early warning on this. This is on the weekly. But uh, let's take a look at the monthly. I'm kind of bracing my... Well, the monthly is not too bad. You know, the monthly usually calls the market top. So so with that in, in mind, I think we've got sort of a near-term pullback that's obviously happening. I don't like that this TSI is coming down and we have a red ERI, however. When did that cross down, you guys? That was... Nope. The TSI crossed down here. That was Monday. So that was the confirmation. Uh, let's see, Monday, April. No, I'm sorry, guys. This is, uh, I'm on a weekly. Uh, I misread that. But it started, look at that, though. I mean, it started to give bearish signals. Well, I can't say that. It did have some uh, the TSI going bearish really a non-signal by itself. So as much as we'd like to say, hey, look at that, but uh, we can't. I'm curious, though, what the ATR says, the average true range here. So, you know, uh, we are still bullish on the average true range. I think it's a good time to talk about our indicators. And let me just take a quick look at the IBIT that's coming down. All right, so so basically, you guys, let's talk about our indicators for a second because these have been giving us a huge edge. And uh, if you don't have them already, these are <laughs> these freaking lines. Come on, trading view. Somebody, anyone have a contact over there? I'm gonna, I need to yell at them about a few things. Come on, you guys. Uh, to ignore this. It used to be, anyway, I've said this a hundred times. I'm just gonna shut up. So um, basically, it's given us a huge uh, heads up on what's going on here. Look at all these sell order blocks. So but basically, the, the cryptomastery.org slash pro. Watch this video. Go there. Watch this video. If you're watching this on the replay, if you're watching this on YouTube, go watch this. And uh, what's going on here? Uh, I might have lost my keyboard access. Um, sometimes that happens, you guys. So that may be it. Okay, uh, sorry about that. So basically, go watch this, cryptomastery.org slash pro. There's a lifetime option there. You want to get it, at least get it for the year because look at how how much it's given us this information on the um, the charts here. So basically, on the total market cap, I've been saying for a while now that uh, we're bearish. If I go to the regular total market cap on this weekly time frame, so specifically the signals that we saw, and I took a screenshot just in case that changes. So let's take a look at this because I, you know, I, I was hesitant, but here, bearish engulfing ERI, that early reversal indicator that was an accidental discovery back in the 2021 cycle, bearish engulfing candle right there. So those are the first two signals on this total market cap weekly when we hit three trillion, and. Ay, ay, ay. This has become my new nemesis because uh, my keyboard uh, is has conked out on my Wi-Fi keyboard. So here, I'll just move it. Oh, now it lets me do it. So basically, so it's being hidden. So th this works. Okay, so basically, look at this. This bearish ERI, early reversal indicator. Why is that significant? It's not just a red arrow, you guys. The oscillator is this. And you guys have known, you don't want to look at this all day long. What this does is it tracks programmatic selling and big whale selling and buying. Since you don't want to look at this, the parameters are in, are in here. Uh, we don't disclose. I have before. But essentially, we put red and green arrows to show the specific pattern that we're looking for. 
and it's given us a huge advantage. See this green arrow here when went green and green and green and green. And then we had this huge bull run. This was back here in September of 2023. We caught that. And on the monthly time frame, we had a green ERI back here in January. So we're getting back in these markets. But specifically, what I'm looking for now is the market cycle top. Did we just have a top? Let's look at the clues. It's Sherlock Holmes times. Bearish ERI, bearish engulfing candle. We just had one. Bearish ERI, bearish engulfing candle. Okay, and so those two clues uh, check. Now, the other thing we saw, stay with me, because we had bearish trend strength indicator. Let me turn off the TSI oscillator there, and I'll just turn these on as we look at them. Here's the next one. This, this turning from green to red and then going below 80 right here. That was in November of 2021. Guys, for, in M3, how many of you remember when I was telling us to get into cash? October, November, December of 2021, and pounding the table to get out of these markets in January because this was happening and we were seeing those signs. Okay, and so that was a huge clue. And then, of course, we had the RSI. We didn't have the RSI Pro then. This is a new indicator that uh, that I love when these things line up. But that was also confluence. Confluence is what gives you the confidence to make the trade. So what are we seeing now? We have these two. We had the, the TSI got kind of broke down a bit early, but we're having this RSI here as of June 10th last week. So it was last week I was alerting the attention to you guys, and I was saying – that if we close here as of Sunday's close, we got trouble and we have been bleeding out ever since. So with that in mind, and then we also have these other signals here, not that one I want to show as the signal line, which is a momentum indicator, also red, turned from red to green back here uh, quite a ways back. So the clues have been here, you guys. And um, so uh, anyway, that's the indicators. Uh, if you don't have them, go to cryptomastery.org slash pro. And what is going on here? My keyboard, I'm going to have to figure out how to get out of this mode because I can't escape out of it. And I used to be able to do that, but I might be stuck here. That'd be a problem. So uh, let's see, reset chart view settings, remove indicators. Uh, let's see, does anybody know how to get out of this mode without having access to a keyboard? What's with all of the, uh, sorry, I sent this link somehow privately and I need to put it all to all of you guys. How did that happen? There, there's the link you guys. Okay. So, um, I'm, I'm somehow stuck, however, uh, yeah, I, um, Myrene, can you Google how to get out of this? My keyboard is conked down on me, which tends to happen lately. I would have figured this out. It's got new batteries, but I need a way to get out of basically full screen mode. Isn't it just F11? Uh, my keyboard won't work. Sorry, you guys. Today's has been fraught with tech challenges. And um had a fresh reboot before this. I think something just happened. I had I set all the HD settings so high that uh, it's uh, it maybe it's conking out the other machinery that's connected to this um any questions you guys and did not mean to do that but while we're here look how pretty these indicators look on the uh, dark version for those of you that like dark version perry yes uh, out of full screen on the browser and now what have i done here um up here there i so we got that far i need to get back into light mode and click on view uh what do you mean david yeah i don't i don't think that's working upper right of the screen and zoom. Oh, this isn't a zoom issue. This is my screen share. I'm talking about how do I get uh, uh, back to where I have all my signals. I'm sorry, you guys, this, um, 
Yeah, on occasion, I've got to like this happens and my keyboard conks out. It's a wireless keyboard. I love it. But um, the only option is to reboot and I'd have to end class. So, guys, I'm going to have to end class here. Uh, so sorry about that. We're we're coming up on time. Join us for M3 tomorrow. We'll unpack all of this. I think, you know, probably we'll kind of finish off here on the, on this 21 day. But we are putting in lower highs. And um, look at this hybrid Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF proposed. All right. So there's not a whole lot happening today. I think we probably hold a little bit at this 21 week, 21 week EMA. And uh, but I think we probably do go lower 2.2 trillion likely. And Bitcoin, I think we come down to um, 62K, 58K in that range. And then uh, then we'll see. Then we'll go from there. It's possible we're forming a big cup and handle pattern here which would be great but we would need that to break toward the upside so with that everybody sorry about the, uh, the issues here today uh we'll sort it out here for next time and play with this but uh nothing i can do i've got to reboot this machine cheers everyone we'll see you tomorrow at m3 that's crypto matt sorry that's m3 uh, over at moonstream.io moonstream.io slash m3 join us there and we'll deep dive into the dxy total market caps uh, do some coin picks and uh Fill you in there because the class did run a bit long, but I think it unpacked the news very well for you guys. Uh, or anyway, so uh, cheers. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> That's funny.